We'd like to introduce you to Gina Gyeong Myers, uh, Teacher of the Year from the Grant Joint Union High School District, now the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here. Well, tell us about what you teach and, and, and where. I teach physical science. That's the science curriculum for grade eight students. And I teach at Norwood Junior High School, which is a middle school that serves seventh and eighth graders in Sacramento. So tell us about your program and what types of things that you teach the students. Physical Science 8 is a curriculum designed for incoming 8th graders who may or may not have had any formal science instruction during their elementary or grade 7 years. Um, it encompasses topics ranging from chemistry to physics to astronomy. So tell me about what you do to motivate the students and get them going. Students are very easy to motivate to love science because they come into you with an intrinsic love for science. You may be talking about a child who has seen a butterfly for the first time or an advanced physics student who are studying collision and conservation of momentum. But whatever student you're talking about, they have this desire to know how the universe operates and how things or why things behave the, uh, the way they do. And it's, it's a very wonderful job for me because of that. How do I motivate kids? Uh, it's actually pretty easy. If you have a child who's had four hours sitting in a reading classroom, just reading or writing, or a child who's been through two hours of math, just looking at problem solving on the board or possibly doing about 100 math problems, then you have that child come into your classroom and let's say do a lab about estimating the amount of sugar in a bubble gum, there would be, it wouldn't be hard for me to motivate that kid. In fact, after my first lab, which is determining the sugar content in a bubble gum, I have actually children knocking on my door and wanting to be <laughs> in my class, because where else could you chew a bubble gum and experiment on it? So <laughs> it's, it's really an easy task to get kids uh, interested in science. It's in keeping that interest going until they go to high school, which is relatively hard, I think, or more challenging. What are some of the challenges that teachers face these days? As a, as a science teacher, a lot. Um, when I was teaching in the Philippines, and I was teaching in the Philippines for 11 years before I immigrated in America, for every four hours of teaching you have in the Philippines, which we call contact time, you have four hours of prep. So it's one is to one. You teach one class, you have one hour of prep. Here you have to teach five hours, and you have, and you have one prep. And if you're a science teacher, you do labs, which is a totally different thing. You set them up, you disassemble them. I practically have to clean test tubes during winter with no hot water, but that's a different story. But a, a science teacher has only one hour prep to do all this and five classes to teach. And sometimes it can be biology, honors biology, and then chemistry. So a science teacher definitely has a lot of challenges that she or he must work around. And what about as far as challenges in, in dealing with the students on a daily basis? They're actually fun. <laughs> <laughs> you might have 35 in a class, and of course some would test your patients more than the others, but see, it's the kids respect you when they see that you care about them. You care about their education, and they see that you prepared too much or you show that rather, when they see that you actually come to class prepared. And that's how you get respect, and that's how you get love from the students. And it's this relationship, respectful relationship that you build in the classroom that actually prevents a lot of the uh, problems that, that might come up in a regular classroom. So relationships are a big part of teaching. It is a very, it's, it's a huge part of teaching, I believe. Because without that, you don't make the connection with the students? Exactly. Now, how long have you been teaching total? 11 years in the Philippines and 8 years in America. So during that time, how have you seen education uh, change? In, in the United States, there seem to be phases where there's, there are fads. Fads come and go. Um, I remember there was a huge push for open discovery in science and then that got replaced by guided inquiry 
And there's been a big push before for explicit direct instruction, and that's been replaced by culturally responsive teaching. And for me, good teaching is good teaching. Every teacher knows when you're accomplishing your learning goals and when your kids are learning and which methods work and which methods do not work. So it's all about the teacher adapting. Exactly, and being flexible and making sure that every child really is served in your classroom. So what inspired you to become a teacher? What brought you to, to the profession? It was not actually... Uh, noble, you might say. Um, the Philippines is um, made up of 2,100 islands, and, and that's high tide. Imagine when it's low tide. <laughs> Several islands cropped up. But um, my, my mother once told me that, well, you have to find a job that would allow you to work in whichever island you might land on. Uh, and so we thought, ooh, teaching. I was working in a laboratory. My, my major is science. I'm not really an education major or I don't have an education major. Uh, I, was <clears throat> I was working in a research lab and I thought, well, teaching would afford me to still be able to connect with the subject I love so much, which is um, science, and also afford me the chance to have a job wherever, whichever island I may happen to land myself into. And so I took courses, about two, two years of education courses, and started my student teaching and found myself loving it. Because in a lab, um, the test tubes don't talk to you back. Right. Whereas in a classroom, the kids talk to you and they tell you what they like. And so I, I loved it. And mm. I, I can't think of actually being away from the classroom too much. Did you have any one teacher in your lifetime that it, who inspired you? Several. Of course, my mother was the best. Um, she, she taught us all how to read and write before we even had to go to school. Uh, I had a grade four teacher before who bent the rules for me and gave me the first honors medal, even though I did not deserve it because she <laughs> saw the potential in me. And I had that one chemistry teacher who, who made sure that every opportunity is given to me so that I could realize my full potential. I've, I've been fortunate to have a lot of good teachers in my life. Do you think about them when you, you've been in the classroom teaching and maybe what they would have done that you try to do? I do. I was one of those students who were quiet and whom a teacher would basically ignore because I did what was asked of me and I did not present any challenges. Uh, and I usually get passed on and ignored in class except for those teachers who actually took care of me and made sure that I am uh, being given opportunities that would otherwise not pass my way. And when I see students who are quiet in class, I don't assume or make the assumption that they are learning. Uh, and, they're, and I could easily ignore them because I have more press, pressing issues over here. I also make sure that they are allowed to bloom as much as, as they can. Mm. Well. What would you say to those people who are considering teaching as a profession? What would you say to them to, to kind of convince them that, that they should follow that path? Teaching gives you rewards that you can't find elsewhere. You work in an office or you work in a lab. It would always be doing the same thing over and over again. In teaching, there are always surprises. There's, there are never two days that are alike. There would always be something that's different. And um, excitement, you'll find excitement every day. The pay may not be as high as other professions, but the rewards are enormous. Uh, you see your students actually coming back thanking you and saying that they've made a change or positive changes in their lives because of you. And no other job can beat that. No other job can offer that. Mm. Well, congratulations on being named one of the teachers of the, the teacher of the year for the Grant Joint Union High School District, which is now the uh, Twin Rivers mm -hmm. Unified School District. Uh, Ginny Guillen-Myers, thanks for being here and talking to us. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. Thank you.